Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel and today I have the pleasure to be sitting down with Dr. Denise Maxwell. She is a multi-genre photographer, award-winning, accomplished and fantastic person and today she's here to talk about how to make money from your photography. She's got a course going on and um, yeah we're lucky to have her here to share some tips on how to make money which is what we want to do especially in this cost of living crisis. Um, so yeah Denise but before we start you know, talking about how to make money. If you could tell us a bit about yourself. We want to know who is Denise? Okay, so first of all, Denise is an average everyday person, probably like many of the people watching this interview today. Um, in all of my talks and in all of my courses, one of the things that I like to share is that I'm an average working class person, I'm a working class estate, um, went to a comprehensive, didn't come from a background of people with money, I was the first person to go to university in my family. I was the first person to have a business in my family. Um, and I like to share all of this. And in all of my courses, I share pictures of, so our, our house growing up, me and my brothers dressed in the clothes that we wore at those times, um, <laughs> what our street looked like. I like to share all of those things because I want people to know that it's possible to make it as a successful photographer, to make this your living and to be making money from this no matter what your background is. Um, the reason I think it's important to share that is that, especially when I was training and I used to come to events like this myself, mm. I used to come across so many people that would do talks and speak about being a photographer and traveling all over the world and having these amazing images. Mm. And then they'd mention something about money and they'd say, but I don't make a lot of money for, from it, but I'm very passionate about it. And it always left me puzzled because it always left me thinking, so great, you're passionate about something, who's paying your bills? Yeah, and, and clearly like your bills are like the most important thing, especially as an adult, you know, you're thinking, how do I make ends meet? Exactly yeah. that. <laughs> who's paying your mortgage? How do you get a car? Mm. How do you go into these places? Who's buying your equipment? All those costs of doing business. So it used to leave me thinking, so is this possible as yeah. a working class person to be a photographer? Mm. And a lot of the people I've come across would be people that already had links to the industry. They've their friend owned an advertising organization or they got in through family links and been close, close personal links. So it used to always leave me doubting whether or not I could be a professional photographer. So by me sharing a little bit about my background, a little bit about who I am, a little bit about where I've come from, I hope that people that watch this and see something in me that reminds me of reminds them of themselves and from that they know that they can make it so whether that's me as a working class woman whether that's me as a woman whether that's me as a black person whether that's me as a mother mm. whether that's me um, starting from scratch you know all of those things in me I hope that somebody can look at those things and think oh yeah I'm like that person, so if she can do it, then I can do it as well. And and the evidence is here. You're here today to actually tell us how to get to where you are. So how did you get into photography? Because you we want to build that that journey into making money. So where did you start from? And okay. um, again, this I'm asking this for our listeners who are thinking, okay, I want to get into photography. Where do I start from? <laughs> okay, yeah. so where do you start? How did I get into it? So first of all, I would say that in one way or another, I've always been a photographer. Okay. Not a photographer that was making money, but I've always been a photographer. Okay. By that, I mean that I was always the friend in that in my group of mm. friends taking images. Yeah. Not only that, whenever I was I was employed anywhere, I always became the work photographer. Mm. So I always ended up doing the headshots. Okay. I always ended up shooting the events. Okay. And this was just on my... At the time, it was a film camera. I don't even know what it was. Might have been an Olympus something. So I always ended up being that person. So I've always loved images. So that was from a passion perspective. Yes, absolutely, okay. from a passion perspective. Um, and even before working, I used to bring, I used to borrow my mum's camera and bring into junior school to take pictures of my friends in junior school. Oh wow! <laughs> so I've literally got pictures of us from junior school with the camera that I borrowed from my mum. That yeah. was, I was eleven. Oh wow! So. I've always you've, you've been a photographer yeah, for the longest time. I've always time. loved imagery, always loved that. Amazing. So how do you make that move from passion into the business of photography? Okay. So um, how I started, so first of all, I probably wouldn't have been a photographer if I hadn't been made redundant from my previous job. I was made redundant and I had to look for something else to make me money and to make that living. 
um, when I made the transition from working in the NHS to then being a photographer, mm. um, my very first jobs were jobs from family and friends around me. Okay. I always say to everybody that you start with your initial network. That's yeah. where that's that's what you've already got. You yeah. haven't got to go out and look for that network. You've already got, you know, friends with children, mm. and friends who work at different business places, and parents, and maybe children yourself, nieces and nephews. You start with them. So everybody in my network had photos. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was good practice. You know, you were putting in your 10,000 hours. Absolutely. That's yeah. the practice. But that was also shots that they would then post in places, mm. have up on their walls, etc. So then their family and friends would then ask who took those photos. And then you get referrals and next thing exactly. you're being hired outside your immediate exactly. circle. Okay. Exactly. So that's how it started. My first, I'd say highly paid but my first very well paid jobs again was from my network um, my first jobs that I first started doing were um, you know print on site where you set up a background you yeah. get the images <laughs> and you sell them straight away yeah. so I used to do one of those or one or two every weekend for my friend who was an Asian wedding photographer okay so he'd already had an established business he mm. wanted somebody to provide that service at his wedding mm-hmm. um, like I said he was my friend I went to college with him so he asked me if I wanted to come in and do that. Okay. So for, I'd say, for the maybe the first two years of my career, that was a main bulk of my business. Um, and obviously from that, I then got linked with other people and it grew and grew and grew. But that's how I started off um, doing print on site. Amazing. And one thing we know about you is you're a multi-genre photographer. Is it important, and you still are, from, you started from weddings, but you, you know, branched out to different things. Is it important to have a niche to be able to start a business or, you know, you'd advise people to just keep shooting what they can? I would say that it can work in different ways. Okay. I know successful photographers who only shoot one thing mm. and I know successful photographers that shoot a variety of things. Okay. And I also know successful photographers that tell everybody they shoot one thing, <laughs> but actually behind the scenes you see them shooting a council event mm. and you shoot, see them shooting a birthday party over there and you yeah. see them shooting lots of different things but according to their Instagram mm. and their website they only shoot one particular thing okay so I think it, it can work in a variety of different ways and in my courses I, I'm always quite real in giving people analogies to help them to understand this mm-hmm. so I'll ask people the question such as um, okay let me think what does what does Amazon sell everything does it confuse you that it sells everything? No. What did they start by selling? I actually have no idea. They started with books. They were a book with seller. Books. They were a book Interesting. Seller. <laughs> and now they shoot a variety of different things. Yep. Nobody's confused by it. Yeah. You go to Amazon. If they don't have it, you go somewhere else. Yeah. If they do have it, you shop there. It's yep. not confusing. You just get what you want and you yep. ignore the rest. Yeah. And to me, it's the same with photography. Okay. That's an interesting analogy. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, so you've gotten into photography and you had your first highly paying job. I'm sure now in comparison, <laughs> it wasn't as highly paying. But when did you start? When do you feel you started making money from photography? I started making money literally straight away. Okay. Um, one of the things I teach photographers is that you can learn no matter what point of your journey you are. Sorry, you can earn no matter what point of the journey you are on. Mm-hmm. I got my first job in photography where somebody paid me to deliver images two weeks after I bought my camera. Wow. I look back at the images now and they're, they're shocking. <laughs> you would never pay <laughs> yourself to yeah. get those images. The images are shocking now I look back, but I was hired two weeks after I got my camera. Yeah. Um, what I charge then is completely different to what I charge now. Yes. So you can start making money straight away. Mm-hmm. You just have to cost your business correctly for the level that you are at. Okay. So straight away, I started making money straight away. Okay, let's talk. So you're talking to me, a photographer. Um, I have been thinking of moving from having this passion in photography. I've done my friends, family. I now want to make money that I can live off, right? Where do I start off in terms of setting up my business as a photographer? So, if you've already taken pictures of your family and friends, you've already started. Okay. With those pictures, you need to make sure that you've got some kind of online shop window. I always call it an online shop window. So, somewhere where somebody that doesn't know you can easily access 
all of that work to see what it is that you do and how you perform. Okay. So whether that's Instagram, whether that's a website, whether that's, you know, the myriad of different places that you can show your photos. Mm. But it has to be something that's accessible. Okay. That people don't need to add you in order to be able to view it. Mm. Um, so that's the, the first place where you start. The next place where, where you go to is then putting all of these out. So whether that's sharing them as stories, whether that's sharing them to family and friends to share, tagging you, I'm now doing this. Um, this is what my packages are. It's then pushing yourself out to the wall and saying, I'm open for business. This is what I'm doing. Okay. So I've set up my shop. Yep. Um, people are asking me how much I charge. Yep. How do I price my work? Okay. How, do, how do you value your worth as a photographer? Okay. So that is a conversation that it's probably a little bit too long to go into here. Yeah. But I give photographers a very easy formula of just working out not necessarily what their value is, but what they need to live on and how they can make what they need to live on. Okay. So there's a very similar formula, um, simple formula, sorry, where I get them to tell me a figure that they need to live on per year and then we work out how they would need to make that figure from their photography. And with that formula, photographers then, I then will get a lot of people that will say to me, oh my gosh, that, that sounds so much easier than I thought it would be. Um, I don't want to give away that formula here. Well, that's why <laughs> people have to buy the course. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to give away that okay. formula, but it's a very easy, easy formula to, th- to work out how much you need to live on. Okay. And say I've worked out how much to live on. I know a lot of photographers think um, or don't quite realize that they have expenses, business expenses. <laughs> you know, how do I determine what's a business expense and what's not a business expense? Okay. Everything to do with your photography is a business expense. Okay. So the time it takes in you planning to do a shoot is a business expense. Everything you buy from batteries, from a cable, from an extension lead, from a camera, don't just class your big things as a business expense. Class every single screw, nut and bolt to do with your camera as a business expense. That's bags, that's earphones, that's cables, that's memory cards, that's hard drives. Um, that's props for a photo shoot, that's lighting, everything is a business expense. So those are the, are the, are the physical kind of things that people will prob- will probably think about linked to photography. But then also think about your travel, your travel time, your vehicle, um, whether you're charging mileage or you're charging for the lease of a vehicle, yeah. whether you have a studio and you're leasing that studio, those are business costs. All the costs linked to your studio, such as your electricity, your gas, Insurance. Um, insurance. <laughs> yeah. Anything to do with your photography is a business cost. I find that often when new photographers are starting out, they I'll have people say to me, Oh, don't I have any cost of business? I'm like, <laughs> Everything is a cost of business. Yeah. So if you've have you bought a camera, yeah, well, that's mm-hmm. cost of business. Editing and, software. Yeah, editing software that you pay for monthly, yeah, yeah. that's cost of business doing business. Do you use any electricity at home? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're allowed to charge a certain amount back to your business. So Often people feel as though a business cost has to be something physical like a camera or a lens, um, but it's all of those other things as well. Um, and then when you're charging clients, part of your business cost includes your wear and tear on your equipment, includes your thinking time, includes your planning time, includes your delivery time. All of those things then come into your business cost. Um, so, and in terms of how to actually make money as a photographer, I'm a photographer and when we started with photography we just think that providing the service of photography is how to make money i shoot i get paid is that how you make money in photography that's one of the ways okay. that you can make money in photography so one of the things that i teach on my courses is i have a list of 26 different ways that you can make photography 26 26 different ways okay. you can make money through photography I have multiple streams of income and I have 10 streams of income from photography. So I literally will go through how we set these streams up, how you make money from them, what kinds of money you can make from them. Because mm. I'm very practical where I want people to know the real ins and outs. Mm. Again, I've been to courses in the past where I've left thinking, okay, but how do I do that? Yeah. Well, thanks for telling me that, but now how, how do, do I start? Yeah. yeah. How, does it, how does it relate to me? Yeah. So I'm very practical where I tell people, this is where you go to. This is the website. Mm. This is what you can earn. This is what I earn. Here's a screenshot of my bank account. This is what came in. So I'm just very real and very open and very honest to say to people, this is what it is. So 
this stream in itself might not be enough to live on, but as one of your 10, mm -hmm. then it contributes to a great income. Okay, I know you're not going to give away all of your course details uh -huh. here, but if you could just tease us with maybe two ways that you could okay. make money absolutely, from Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, one way. Um, so, we all talk about influencing in terms of uh, makeup and clothes, yeah. and you know, we know about influencers like that. There are also photography influencers. Okay. They get paid to post certain things mm. or to post about where they are, and they get paid for that. So for an influencing reel, I'll get £350 for influencing reel. Okay. You get more for a post um, and a different amount for a story. Okay. And that's me as a photographer that doesn't have a, a massive following. Mm. I'm sure there are other photographers that have bigger followings that get paid much yeah. more for their influencing reels. And, and as a small um, following photographer, um, the worry is always, how, do, can I work with brands if I have a small following? You know, is it a limitation? Do I have to meet the 10,000 follower mark for brands to take me seriously? Um, do you think that should be a factor that people should not think about? I don't think it should be. I think mm. that you have nothing to lose from trying. Trying, okay. All they can say is no. Mm. And if they say no, it still means that you're on their radar. So when you do get to that point, you've already contacted them previously. You've got something to go back and say, well, I contacted you when I was at such and such. I'm now at such and such. Mm. Still interested in influencing based on this particular product that I use, this lens that I use, this brush that I use, mm. would you be interested? Okay. Um, with, if you also work on your personal branding, so what people know about you, what people know about your business, mm. and some of those people will approach you as well. Yeah. So they'll see that you're speaking at this show. They'll see that you are delivering in universities. They'll see that a lot of students follow you or a lot of people that a type of people that they want to reach. Target market, yeah. And then they will contact you as well. So okay. it's a combination of all of those things. So influencing, that's one of them. All right. So so like I say, if I if I have um four influencing reels a month, that's already fourteen hundred pounds as one of a seven. One and of you the were going to create streams. these reels anyway. So now you're getting paid to do exactly so. that. Exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. Okay. Um, another very simple one. Um, so you go out and shoot an event. You get paid for that event. Yeah. I teach photographers how to make money multiple times from the same from the same set of images. So one time you're getting shot, you, you're getting paid for that event. Yeah. What I will then do, the event coordinators will obviously get a copy of their photos, mm -hmm. but I will then upload the event pictures to a portal where people that attend the event can purchase photos. Okay. So event photographers, so the event company or people that have commissioned me get their photos. Mm -hmm. Then I get money from people that want to purchase photos of themselves from that event. So that's twice from the same amount, some of the same amount. Well, some of the events I shoot, some of them are also press worthy. Mm -hmm. So some of those shots I can upload to press. Okay. So I get paid if it ends up in a newspaper article. So that's three times from the same event. Mm -hmm. I also do stock photography as well. So there'll be certain things in that event that I can post as stock. That won't mean anything to anybody, but it would be something interesting for a stock agency. So, for example, all the feet walking past here to show that this is a busy show, that's not going to mean anything to anybody. Nobody's going to complain that you posted my feet to a stock agency. It's not, it's not going to matter to anyone. Yeah, but well, then it's I stock footage that someone's going to download and use someday for exactly. something else. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody's hands holding a cup, they're, they're, mm. they're drinking something. That's stock footage. So, all of those. So, when I shoot events, as when I shoot the event, I'm also looking at the peripherals of, oh, that's a good shot that I could use for such and as such. That's what business idea is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's that, potentially getting paid four different times on the same set of images. Yeah. And that, I mean, I'm taking this personally. I'm like, okay, I've never even thought of that because I go to so many events and all I do is shoot, deliver a gallery and, you know, I, I shelve it. Yeah. Or, you know, those images are in some SD drive and I'm thinking, oh, I could actually have done X, Y, and Z with them. So yeah. that's, that's really helpful. And that's something that I feel like a lot of photographers will really appreciate uh -huh. to, to know about that. Yeah. So obviously this topic is something that a lot of photographers are interested in. This is the third year you're giving this talk uh -huh. about how to make money. Uh, why do you think photographers or there is an interest in this particular subject? So I think that this subject in particular is interesting for photographers. And there is such a crave for this subject because mm -hmm. I really feel it's missing in the industry. Okay. I think there are so many videos and YouTube tutorials, etc., on how to 
how to use one light, how to use multiple lights, mm. how to use this particular lens, how to pose, mm. how to take all the essence of a good photo. I think there's so much information on that. Yeah. And there are also so many courses on that. I think what there isn't is photographers sharing their secrets to their success. I think photographers yes. are very much like, oh no, like even when it comes <laughs> to just websites, we have this like discussion with my friends sometimes where it's, do you put your prices on your website? Uh -huh. You know, does it mean if you put your prices on the website and someone else has higher prices that you won't get clients because, you know, uh -huh. it's, it's this thing where we, there's so much shame about talking about money. Yes. And desiring money, yes. especially with a British culture where Absolutely. money and wealth is not something that we speak about exactly. openly. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, it, it, it definitely is interesting. But we still need to make a living. Absolutely. You know, we've got bills to pay. And not only bills, <laughs> what, if we, what if we want to make a good living? Yeah. Like, what if like some of, the, some of the biggest companies in the world, they don't feel any shame about charging us no. £4,000 for a product? Yeah. Um, they don't feel any shame about upping the prices by 50%, not even like a 10% And those increase. products are photographs that someone took. <laughs> yeah. So why is it that we, as photographers or as a British culture, mm. feel that we need to put the idea out that, oh, we only want to cover our bills or mm. we only want to make this much. No, so I want to make money. justifying why we should make money. <laughs> I want to be comfortable. Yeah. I want to go on holiday when I want to go on holiday. Mm. I want to have 20,000 pairs of trainers. Mm. I want to buy equipment when I want to. Mm. I want to have a comfortable living. And there's nothing wrong with saying yeah. that. There's nothing wrong with saying I want to make a good profit. Mm. So that is the message that I put out to photographers. I yeah. talk to them about business. I talk to them about using their creativity as a business. Mm. I give real facts and figures. I, I share screenshots of bank accounts. I set scripts, I share screenshots of my accounting software. Mm. I do all of those things to make it real and show people the real ins and outs of what I've learned. Mm -hmm. I think that if I'd had some of this information when I first started, <laughs> would you be a millionaire right now? Like, maybe not a multi, millionaire, but <laughs> I, would, I would be a lot more comfortable yeah. than I am. And, and I am comfortable, but I, I think I would have got to where I am now a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, because I've had to learn those things as I've gone along. Well, we, we appreciate that now you're here <laughs> sharing, you know, throwing the ladder back and telling thank us you. how to get up. Thank you, thank you. Um, outside of the technique of being a businesswoman and um, having, you know, strategies, what do you think helps to make a successful photographer? Oh, I, that's, a, that's a really difficult one. I think success can, can I think a successful photographer can look a variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's one formula to, to being a successful photographer. I don't even think good images is the, the marker for being a successful mm -hmm. photographer because some of the most successful photographers I know don't necessarily produce the best images. That's true. <laughs> so if we're talking about business success, business success, um, the best success is people that see their photography as a business. Yeah. One of the things that I try and teach new photographers is consider each photo you take as 10 quid. And each time you give photos away for free, you're giving away 210 quids. Mm. How much money have you given away in your photos? A lot of money. I feel like we don't we don't value our work enough. Exactly. <laughs> we don't put a price on it. Yeah. We just think it's a digital product. It's not costing us anything, but actually it's costing us something. Yeah. It costs us our equipment that we bought, the time that we put into it, the memory cards, the knowledge, everything that you've put in to be able to create that. It's cost us cost you a lot of money already. And if you're giving it away for free, then you're actually giving people money. So I ask people to look at their business like that. All right, ask them to look at it like a, as a product. Consider each photo as a box of cereal on a shelf. Mm. And each time you give away a photo, you're giving away a box of cereal. Yeah. Now, eventually, you're going to give away 200,000 boxes of cereal, and you're giving away how many thousands of pounds? It's like, yeah. And you afford to give away thousands no, of pounds. No, you can't. <laughs> would, would Tesco do that? No, they wouldn't. Exactly. <laughs> they have the trolley at the end yeah. to ask us to contribute towards yeah. <laughs> towards charities. Yeah. So, you know, big companies don't do this. Mm. Why are we doing it as a small sole trader or as a small company? You know, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to and and I think that is something very particular to creatives, to the creative yes. field. Because 
I shoot lots of conferences um, that cover lots of different things and mm. they're very proud to say we have a projection of four billion next year. Mm. We're looking to increase our profits by X amount next year. I think it's because we don't associate numbers with art. I, apart from if I'm delivering, if, when a client asks you, so how many photos do I get from this? You know, that's uh, when you're quick to say, I'll give you 70 photos or you get five highly edited images. But we, we don't associate numbers with our art because we, we think our art is abstract. It's something that's, you know, imaginative and you couldn't have a number to that. See, I think there's a lot of people that think like that, but I've never kind of thought like mm. that. I've always... So, just an example to show you how I've always thought about it in terms of money. you are, yes. <laughs> so, when I was at college, and I remember um, we used to have to shoot, like, the fashion students' fashion shows, the makeup students, um, their, their makeup looks, etc. Mm -hmm. Just as part of our practice, like, everybody in the college works, works together. And I remember doing some shots for one of the makeup artists. And I remember her asking if she could use them on her website. And my first thought was, how much are you going to pay me for it? Oh, wow. Okay. Whereas everybody else in the class were like... Yeah, just send them to Exposure. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I was like, but well, they're, they're my photos. Yeah. Like, I own the photos. Yeah. And they were all still saying, but well, they're her images. I'm like, but they're not her images. Yeah. So straight away, I always had the idea that these photos have a price attached to them. Mm. Um, and maybe it's because I didn't come from um, the kind of art VA in arts mm. and photography kind of background. So okay. I always saw the practical side of it. Maybe also because I'm a bit of a skin thing. So, like, you know, I do want, I yeah. watch winning. I watch money seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, I count, I, I, I count pennies. I'm always looking for a bargain. I'm always looking for, you know, the, 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 the best price for something. So yeah. maybe that's part of who I am as well, that money and how I manage money has mm. always been something that's in my DNA. Yeah, well, yeah, I've always kind of attached roles to us with money, so... That's a good thing. We're learning from you. We're learning from you. <laughs> and speaking about learning, where can people access, or how can people access this course? Where is it? Details? Because I want in. <laughs> I want to make money. <laughs> so, um, my course is called Learn to Earn. Um, how I make my 5 to 10k income from... Income. Learn to Earn, how I make my 5 to 10k income per month from photography. You can access it via my website. Uh -huh. If anybody um, is interested, they could also inbox me the word 5K and then I will send them all the information on Instagram and they can uh -huh. sign up from there. It's a 10-week online course um, where we come together every Monday evening for 10 weeks and we go through all of this information there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Just thank know you, I will be signing up for that because I need to make money. I also have um, sneakers that I need to buy um, and I want to get into the suit. So, yeah. No, thank you so much for thank taking you. your time to sit with us and talk us through this. And, and I know there's so much more that we can learn. There yeah. Is, there um, is. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let us know if you did in the comment section. And we look forward to seeing the next video. Bye.